Hey there all. Basically today I'm doing a multi-part video and it's uh, going to talk about some movies that you can get for your collection or some movies you might just want to watch for Halloween as well as some uh, great sets, some great DVDs and some great Blu-rays. I'm going to shout out some stuff that I've gotten here and uh, let you see some, maybe some choices that you may not have thought about or some that may be so obvious that uh, you pass them by and honestly that's happened to me so many many times so hopefully uh you'll comment down below here and we'll learn from each other and uh help each other in collecting and uh, halloween watching so let's get right to it uh by the way i'm on here this is my channel and uh i'll do videos on the horror globe so this may go be multi-part and go back and forth just letting you guys know that horror globe is a great great channel uh if you haven't got a chance to check it out yet just getting started getting stuff up there and uh Hopefully you'll uh, you like this video, and you'll like this video because you know I get a lot of watches, but likes not all the time. So let's get right to it. <clears throat> First up is one that I picked up yesterday. So if you you just got onto my channel, you've probably seen this video. Uh, one of this, and it's The Exorcist. I think The Exorcist is a movie that belongs in everybody's collection, and I can't believe it took me this long to get it. However, I was wait, waiting, I guess, maybe for the right version of it. Uh, and I did love everything that was on The Exorcist before. I just wanted to know more about the actual case. And uh, when this one had uh, information, more information on the actual, uh, the real thing, uh, I, I had to pick it up. That, and it is probably one of the most gorgeous uh, sets that I have gotten. The Exorcist is a, a great Blu-ray set. If, you, if you've already got it on digital, can you don't want the extra features you know that's good for you that's great but uh if you haven't if you've got a dvd and you haven't upgraded yet uh go for this version of the digibook uh, you can get this one at 33 at a uh, at costco maybe a little bit less if you if you shop around but it's here in canton anyway uh exorcist is definitely one that should be on your watch list uh, on, at about uh halloween and of course again on christmas because we know this one this baby came at christmas time in space. Next up is a fun little slasher horror film that uh, you like if you don't take self too seriously, and that movie is Maniac Cop. Uh, William Lustig, of course, who uh, helped uh, found Anchor Bay and went on later words to uh, to do Blue Underground, uh, made this uh, movie about a, uh, a killer cop that pretty much was wrong, and it is just an incredibly fun, fun film. Maniac Cop has Bruce Campbell, Tom Atkins, Richard Roundtree, William Smith, Robert Zadar. I mean, there's a lot of testosterone going on in this film. It is a really fun film. It's uh, it's definitely action-packed. It's uh, different in that uh, the first time I saw this movie, uh, Bruce Campbell wasn't as known. I guess he was known because he did Evil Dead and that. But Tom Atkins was more of the... Uh, the guy. So, uh, there's a surprise. If you haven't seen this, I won't spoil it for you, but there's a surprise in this movie that I didn't expect that, uh, becomes even more shocking when we do a surprise at the beginning of the second movie. But, uh, yeah, this is a great, great film. I'll synapse put this out. If you're over in the UK when you're looking at this video here, then, uh, Arrow Video apparently put out a really good version of this as well, so, uh, you might want to check that out. It's probably a little bit cheaper in this one as well. Um, friend film game junkies he's over in the UK and he does review a lot of the Arrow videos so you might want to check his channel just in case he does have a review of the uh, Maniac Cop DVD next up is a classic Halloween 2 the most underrated of the uh, no the second most underrated of the sequels uh, Halloween 2 is a great slasher film and the only thing that hampers it is it came after Halloween which was one of the greatest slasher films of all time uh, it Definitely is something you should be watching on Halloween. Uh, this is one that I've watched several times. The features on this thing are, yeah, they're pretty friggin' incredible. If you don't have this version, I really recommend it. The other version that's out there is the uh, Anniversary Edition, and it does have Tear in the Isles. It's great to get for Tear in the Isles. If you can get it cheap enough, I would say grab it up at about 10 or so. Uh, if you can get that blue to go with this one, but you got to have this one. This is the Halloween 2 definitive edition to have. 
get the other Alan Two for Tear in the Eye also because it is a great documentary and it's really fun. I remember seeing it in theater. Uh, Faligar 517, he's probably, I know he's reviewed Tear in the Isles. He's done it on the Horror Globe and he may have done it on his own channel as well. So check him out and you'll find more about that version of the, of the film and Tear in the Isles, which you're probably going to want to. So you're probably going to have to double up and have two Halloween 2s in your uh, collection. But uh, trust me, they're both worth it. Next up is, well, it's more science fiction-y than Halloween-y, but I really love this film. And it's The Day Live. It's a John Carpenter classic. Uh, I actually picked this on my accident, to be honest with you. I'm not going to fake right here. This is a good action horror movie. And it is a kind of a cool, if you want to watch a different John Carpenter movie, that's really fun during uh, Halloween. Give it a shot. But more than anything else, although I love this movie and it's one that I got on day one in my collection, my better half got it for me. This was picked up by accident when I was looking at another Screen Factory one. I collect these guys. This was the one that I actually meant to pick up. And yes, it is John Carpenter. I am a fan of John Carpenter, and you know what? Over the years, I still maintain a fan of Carpenter because uh, I think he's been pretty consistent. Ghost of Mars was the one drop that I've uh, pretty much seen in his work, but overall I, I like his work a lot. And uh, The Fog. The Fog is highly, highly underrated. It is a great little ghost story, and there's not a lot of those around there. Now, it's not really good ghost stories. There's stuff like The Changeling and, movie, and uh, films like that, and you know, there's some really, really good ones. So. But I just really like this film. It's very atmospheric. Uh, Adrienne Barbeau is in this one. She does a great job. Uh, at the time, I think she was mostly famous for being the uh, mom's big-breasted daughter. Uh, and I guess, in a way, the uh, person that helped break up uh, John Carpenter and Temper Hill, whether that's true or not, they were dating afterwards. Uh, we've got Tom Atkins, again, the man in here. Uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. John Houseman, of course, is the is the narrator of this film. Hal Holbrook has an extremely pivotal role, and Janet Leigh is an important role in this one as well. And even though she doesn't really have any real big scenes with her daughter, it was it's just really nice uh, to uh, see so many big stars make such a such a not really I'm not gonna say it's a tiny movie, but it is not it's not epic in scope. It's just a very folksy, very home spun horror tale. It's really cool. It's uh, If you've never seen it, you really should. It's the type of tale that you, that's, that you tell at a uh, at a fire, at a campfire. And uh, it's a nice ghost story. Next up is, uh, well, let's get this one out of the way. Guys, it's Halloween. And uh, yeah, I know everybody else has upgraded to the uh, big uh, Blu-ray one. I haven't yet. I am going to because uh, does have an hour-long interview with Jamie Curtis, so if uh, you guys want to check, there's some great guys doing some great reviews of that one there, uh, definitely check it out, because it uh, looks to be a really good Blu-ray. I, I still have the old David Max edition, I uh, always love this edition because of the 87-minute documentary, Halloween, and Cut Above the Rest, and uh, just some really cool stuff. The uh, on location thing is very much a horror's hollow ground type of thing. And I really, I just really, really enjoy this film. Uh, so, H25, this is the 25th anniversary edition of Halloween. Uh, but there's a really good Blu-ray out there. It's going for about $24, though I heard that Target had it for 16 So, you want to check that out. And yes, I didn't say a lot about the film itself, because everybody pretty much knows all about Halloween and Michael Myers, and that it's a classic film. Next up is a double feature for you guys, ones that uh, you should have in your collection. I've got the original Anchor Bay versions here, but I really need to upgrade. Snaps is putting them out, but they're putting up too damn expensive, so I may have to go for the Arrow Video ones in uh, in the UK, and uh, I might just send a friend of mine some money later on to uh, get those for me. And what those are, are uh, a little dusty and stuff, whatever. Demons, and Demons 2. Uh, Lamberto Bava films. Uh, Lamberto Bava, of course, had 
before this. He had made, I think, Macabre and A Blade in the Dark, both films that I do have and I do enjoy a lot. Uh, but these were the ones that would make Lamberto Baba uh, more famous and a more of a household name in horror than he would than he was before. Uh, Lamberto Baba, you, you see, was is the son of a famous Italian director Mario Baba, and that is not easy. So, with that being said, guys, I'm going to put on the kettle after this next DVD. And then we're going to go on to part two. So I hope you're with me. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you're seeing some stuff that you like. Because I'm going to get as many as I can in there. Next up is a Criterion release. And it's a horror movie that I really enjoy. It's not everybody's favorite. But I think everybody should give it a try to watch at least once. That is uh, Polanski's Rosemary's Baby. Of course, uh, William Castle produced this. And... Uh, Mia Farrow had started this one. I think she'd probably been coming off of uh, the series, oh God, Peyton Place at this point, and was probably not the most popular choice for the role, but uh, she's amazing in it. It is a great film. Uh, John Cassavetes actually does a very good job in this movie. And uh, I say that surprisingly because, you know, I was not. I don't know if. I just never. Before this, I guess I, any of the roles I'd seen Cassavetes in wasn't didn't stand out, but uh, this one did, and uh, this has a great uh, secondary cast, by the way. Uh, Ralph Bellamy is in this, and we got Maurice Evans, of course, from Planet of the Apes. We got Ruth Gordon and uh, Sidney Blackmire, and incredible film. Uh, Criterion's done a great job with this one here. I highly recommend this one. Uh, it's, it definitely is a classic. If you see this one in The Tenet, get this one, because The Tenet is a very tedious film. Just, just my opinion. So, Rosemary's Baby. That's the last one for this one here. Come back to watch the second part. I'm going to show you some more stuff. And then I'm going to show you some different stuff. Some kind of stuff you may not have seen. Or you may have uh, seen on some shelves. And wondered if you should get it or not. And I'll let you know what I think. So far, there's some uh, classics right there. And uh, let's get some stuff that are classics. And some that should be classics. So, uh, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, right now, it is uh, time for Soda Street. But I got a bottle of kettle, so it's time for tea.